Adventure. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Sailor, let go of the wheel for a minute. Why? So you can pinch me. What else could a girl ask for? Happy slate? Ah, when I die, this is the way I want to live. Yeah. The two of us on your boat, sailing the Caribbean Sea. Southern wind kissing your cheek. Me pinching you. Who's talking about that? There's something else to talk about? Yeah. Fish. Hmm. Okay, what'll we discuss? Guppies or flounders? Ah, look at him, sailor. Did you ever in your life see a beauty like that? That marlin, what a beauty. What a fight he gave me. Must weigh 300 pounds. 300 pounds? How come I can lift him? And with one hand? What do I know about the talents of weightlifters? I tell you that Marlin... Hey. See what happens when you talk like that? Even boat motors can't take it. They start to die. I don't understand it. She's been running like a dream. Here, grab the wheel, sailor. I'll take a look. What's wrong, Slade? Sounds like dirt in the fuel line. Choke it, sailor. Give it the choke. Think you can nurse it along till we get back to Havana? No, I'll have to clean it out. Maybe we can get some help. Sure, we just dip a chubby little hand into the sea and bring up a mermaid mechanic. We could do that. Or we could hail that catch drifting off our port bow in the cove there. What? I can make her name. Golden Swan. What do you say, Slate? Shall I hail her? In between chokes, sailor, who knows? She might lay an egg with a clean fuel line in it. Ahoy! Golden Swan, ahoy! Ahoy! You try, Slate. My siren call isn't doing anything to them. Roll up the cuffs on your jeans. Show an ankle. That'll get them. Golden Swan, ahoy! It didn't work, Slate, and I rolled up both cuffs. Here, watch me. Ahoy! Golden Swan! Ahoy! Hey, that's funny. There's no one on deck. Not a sign of movement. After you roll down your pants leg, what do we do? We board her. They don't treat me like that. Hold my hand, Slate. I've never walked through a ghost ship before. Theory, isn't it? The other hand. This one's got a stalk of celery stuffed with Roquefort I swiped off the captain's table. Catch riding off an uncharted key without a soul aboard. Who's going to miss a stalk of celery? The way that table was set, like a banquet. Hors d'oeuvres, chicken under glass. Who walks away from things like that? Not you, baby. Enjoy your chicken sandwich? Mmm, yummy. I don't understand it. Not even a dead man aboard. He's complaining. Come on, sailor. There's something about a deserted ship that brings out the lonely in me. Maybe we could tow her back. Find his keepers, you know. No, I don't want her. She's too rich for my blood. Come on. Cut it out, will you? Oh, now, Johnny boy, uh, lad, don't take it to heart. Let's try it, Captain. Pick yourself a palm tree, lean against <laughs> it, and enjoy the night. Just leave me alone. You don't like me. Captain Carey isn't good enough for you. He talks too loud. His hands aren't soft and pink like yours. Eh? <laughs> now, let me tell you, Johnny lad. Yeah, yeah, all right. Forget it. Forget it, Johnny says to me. No, 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 I can't do that. No, no, boy. Something like you and me, he's got here. It's something Captain carey has been looking for. A long time looking. Look, Captain, maybe there's another way. Yes, indeed, there is. 
But I have to tell you, John boy, I'm not happy with you. Hey, by this time now, your wife is supposed to be dead. You promised, lad. Hey, what's your wife doing now, Johnny? Uh, in her hotel room, I guess, uh, sleeping. Margaret likes to sleep. Margaret Norman, a sleeper. In a fancy hotel room on silken sheets, I'd say. Why didn't your wife show up today? Why didn't you bring her to the Golden Swan? I told you, she was tired. She didn't want to look at it. Didn't want to look at it, the lad says to me. So we had to hide the boat till another time. Kill her another time at another place. Now, look, Captain, And please. the thing I don't like, those people who boarded my ship. But they looked, they went away. Aye, aye, they looked and they went away. Then other boats came and tried to find the Golden Swan. Yeah, lucky we are to have found this cove to hide her. Calm water, she'll just drift there. Yeah, lucky yeah, we are. Yeah, we're lucky fellas. Yes, indeed we are. To have such confidence, you and me, each in the other. Yeah, we're fortunate. Now, the, the final item, lad, uh, here. What do I want with a gun? Why, why, lad, but for a thing, kill your wife with it. You're crazy. Be I now? Go on, take it. Hey, take it home with you, John. You're going to sit here and wait? Oh, lad, lad, you're such a child. Listen, John, two people came to my boat today in a power cruiser. Its name I saw was Bold Venture through my glasses. And I must seek them out. Tell them how lucky they are still alive. Tell them it might not be so the next time. Come on, sailor. We're not making a dent in the brain of the inspector of police. Oh, don't grow impatient, senor. My brain is your brain. Make dents to your heart's content. Your brain is his brain, huh, policeman? That explains why Slate's been suspicious of me ever since we came off that catch. He can't believe that all I swipe is a chicken sandwich. Yeah, that's why. You have brought to me, perhaps, a slice of this chicken? And what was it? White meat or dark meat? Eat your heart out, kid. It was with pickle relish. Mm -hmm. It is not that I have a tooth for chicken, senor. It is only that this would be a slice of evidence that you indeed saw a ghost ship. The golden swan, you called her? Because it was the name painted on her transom in big gold letters. What would you have called her? And you did not tow this ghostly ghost ship in? Oh, we told you why. A fuel line was fouled up. In the approximate hour that you have been here, you two, I've had my harbor police comb in the waters. You're going to say all they came up with was sea dandruff. <laughs> I would if I could have thought of it. I was going to say my harbor police found no trace of a catch. The golden swan. Well, maybe she drifted out to sea. She was there, LaSalle. We walked her deck, spied into her cabin. I think you do not need police, senor senorita. I think you need a psychiatrist. Let me recommend mine. Here, his card. He's good, huh? For people who see ghost ships, he's a... a how you say, a, a dilly? Si, sí, a dilly. Amuse yourselves, amigos. And please, stay away from me. I've got enough crazy already. Go away. How much longer are we going to have to wait? How do I know? It just seems to me that the registry office ought to have a better system. What do they do? File data about ghost chips on ectoplasm? What are you so impatient about? Here comes Senor Mercado now. My apologies, Senor Shannon, Senorita Duval. I have kept you waiting too long. Now, what did you find out about the Golden Swan? The Golden Swan. Owned and Capitan by one Capitan Carey. And, Senor, I whisper this in your ear of this Capitan Carey. Bad. Nothing but bad. Suspicion there has been of him. Like what? Two ships of the Capitan blew up in port. One in Macau, another in Montevideo. Insurance was collected. However, the two words have been whispered. What two words? Skull and doggery. <laughs> that goes without saying. Now, about the golden swan. Of this, I know nothing. It has not been reported in these waters. That is all I can tell you. That's enough. Come on, sailor. Sailor, how come a ship we saw and the cops didn't see and has never reported... And... Uh, which way to the registry, mate? No, in there. Uh... Hey. Hey, don't I know you? Yeah, what makes you think you do? Sure I know you, lad. A shipmate once on the Golden Swan. Oh, the Golden Swan, huh? 
When were we shipmates? Oh, that old death ship, the Golden Swan. Oh, uh, you see her again, mate. Uh, keep away from her. Take it from an old shipmate. You trying to tell me something, old shipmate of mine? I said it. Now look, Buster. I, I, I'm a boy. Hey, remember the old days? Old me, handy with the shiv, the knife and the ribs? <laughs> sure you remember. So remember about the swan. Keep away from her. Goodbye, my boy. It's been a happy day, hasn't it, Slate? <laughs> yeah, it makes me tingle when an old salt points a shiv at me. All he did was carve his initials in your pea jacket. Yeah, but on the lapel... Let's leave it like that, huh, Slate? Like two ordinary people living a humdrum existence. How come we see things no one else does, sailor? How can complete strangers stick knives into us? We're talented. I'll get it. I'll get it. Grab your darning needle. Start being humdrum. Shannon's place. Slate Shannon speaking. Mercado speaking. I know something, senor. Goody. It's been a nice chat. Goodbye. I know that only this minute my mouth is talking to a lady. A lady of fragrance who wished to buy the catch, Golden Swan. She wanted to know if the title was clear. What lady? Where? The Senora Margaret Norman at the Palace Hotel. Her perfume was... Put up your thimble, sailor. We're calling on a lady of fragrance. I'm telling you, mister, you can't go in there. That's Mrs. Norman's suite, and she... Yeah, I know. She left orders not to be disturbed. So make a snappy right turn, walk down the hall, turn right, turn left, and then you go through the door to the... Mm. Did you say something, miss? No. It was the man on this $5 bill talking. Have you ever noticed what a real old chatterbox he is? Hmm. Well, what do you know? <laughs> Mrs. Norman left the door unlocked. Thanks a lot, chums. Mrs. Norman? Mrs. Norman? Try the bedroom, sailor. All right. Mrs. Norman, I'm sorry to wake you up like this, but... Slate, come here, quick. What's the matter? Look at her. She's been shot. Huh. The one person who could have given us an answer, sailor... Something tells me that's why it happened to her. That's why she's dead. Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall and the second act of our story. A catch there was that sailed the seas Lately drifted around the Caribbees Seen by Miss Sailor and Slade Shannon then in a twinkle boat seen by no one Then come a lady to registry Who owned Golden Swan, so asked she Then she returned to her bed Perhaps she is tired Come person with gun, lady expired Por favor, senor Slate I have come to ask questions, not to hear music King Moses answered all your questions, Inspector LaSalle Rhymed him, too. Thank you, Miss Sailor. However, in the case of a lady who has been murdered, it is not always easy. I think you did very well. Eh, my father before me, Senor Lasalle Senior, who was also of the police, took me upon his knees and told me that on certain days, the career of the police is sometimes for the birds. I can make up a song about a bird, Senor Lasalle. I will give it to you. No, no, por favor, no. Have you figured out a motive for this killing, Lasalle? Si. The person who killed Senora Norman was a thief. The Senor Norman revealed that jewelry of great value is unaccounted for. Therefore, missing. 
So there's the Senor Norman. What about him? Hmm, if you are being evil, Shannon, to think that he killed his wife, the answer is impossible. Her husband doesn't have a trigger finger? Two of them. However, he is accounted for at the time of the murder. Too far away from the scene of the crime. Discussing business with a Senor Capitan Carey. We checked with this Capitan Carey. Captain Carey. Now that's a name that brings back a memory. Just for the record, LaSalle, what does this Carey look like? Heavy set, uh, big all over. This way and this way. Beaten with the weather. Not too much hair, but down to his knuckles with tattoos. Oh, something tells me I've seen those knuckles clutching a knife. Think your minions can find him again? It is important to do so, senor? Yeah, it's important, and I'll help. The captain was Norman's alibi. Let's see how much Norman will cover for the captain. Slate Shannon, Mr. Norman, with a friend. That's telling him. Go away, get out. That's no way to talk, Mr. Norman. My I told you, get out. Inside, Mr. Norman. What do you want with me? You working with the police? Uh-uh, Mr. Norman. This is Slate's private project. Well, I told them I didn't kill her. I didn't kill Margaret, and I don't know who did. A beating won't make me know either. You don't understand, kid. That's not the project. All I want from you is an old shipmate of mine, Captain Carey. Captain Carey? All I know about him is he owns the catch I wanted my wife to buy for me. That's what we were talking about on the other side of Havana when... when Margaret was murdered. And you wouldn't remember where that is? No. Not even if you... I know. Not even if I beat you. You're in for a disappointment, kid. I'm not going to beat you. Let's go, sailor. <laughs> I admire you, John Boy. I do indeed. Thanks. I kill my wife, Robber. I get admiration from a guy like you. Oh, but a drop in the bucket. These gems compared with all your wife's wealth, eh, my boy? The money you figured to get? Yes, yeah, skeds and skeds of it. Uh, one thing, Captain. It's mm. going to take a little while for Margaret's will to be probated for her estate to be transferred to me. I should get restless waiting, John Boy. I have what I need. This jewelry. What are you talking about? An idea of something worthy, lad. I don't trust you, Johnny. A thief who kills a woman is never trusted, didn't you know? Hey, now, look. Look. Hey, now, look, John says to me. And eventually the police will get on to you. And you'll be naming me. Won't you, boy? No, Captain, no. It has to happen, John. Oh! Sleep, lad. While it happens to you. Adrift in the golden swan. Dead. In time, you will explode. Come on, sailor, on your feet. Slate, we've already looked in every waterfront hole in Havana for Captain Carey. How far can you go on a crummy vendetta? Till one of us drops, me or him. Well, you take it alone this time, Slate. I'll stay here at the hotel to rest my weary jeans. I'll get it. Shannon's place, Sailor Duval. Inspector LaSalle, senorita. We have found Captain Carey. Don't you lay a finger to him. He slates. It's LaSalle. He's found your boy. Hey, give me that phone. Where? Where is he, LaSalle? In my office. He laughs in my face and tells me how he does not know where is Senor Johnny Norman. He says... Maybe he'll tell me, LaSalle. Just hold him there. Bye, sailor. You kidding? I'm going with you. LaSalle, all I need is ten minutes alone with him. We fellows of the sea have a language all our own. And in this language you will bring me the whereabouts of Johnny Norman? That too. I have just put a new grass rug on the floor in that room where he is. Be nice to it. <laughs> Maybe I can get him to wear it for a skirt. Well, if it isn't the sailor boy, Slate Shannon, you come to help an old shipmate in distress? Yeah. It helps, doesn't it, Carrie? <laughs> it clears the head. You're the man to my liking, Shannon. None of that lily-fingered laddie. 
That shiv, where'd you point it, Carrie? Hmm? Here? Uh, no, no, a little higher, nearer the heart. You're sharper with a knife, shipmate. <laughs> You unconscious, Carrie? If you are, I'll hate myself in the morning. Hey, what makes your blood boil so loud? What is it your brain's drooling for? I already got what I want. When I'm running an errand for a policeman. They want Norman. They want a murderer. All right, they can have him. I'm weary of the lad. Where? On the Golden Swan, two miles off of Dugo Key. Is there anything else your seaman's heart needs? Now that you mention it... So I'll hate myself in the morning. Now you really ought to check with your psychiatrist, Inspector LaSalle. You're walking on the deck of a ghost ship. Do you believe it? See, si, I believe it. Okay, Captain, where's the cargo? What'd you do with Johnny Norman? Ah, oh, he's living the good life, lad, in my cabin. Here. Yeah. When I left, the boy was learning a sad sea chanty and singing it for his poor dead widow. Hey, it's in here. Now, uh, John, boy. Now, uh, John, I... What are you doing lying on the floor, boy? Senor Norman is dead from a large-caliber bullet. Is that what you do when you get tired of a buddy, Captain? Give him large-caliber bullets? I tell you, Slate boy, I don't know what happened to him. I'm as surprised as anyone here. I'm not surprised. Oh, the thing's mysterious aboard my ship. Uh, take the dead boy and let's leave it. Well, what's your hurry, Captain? Uh, well, it's my ship. I said get off it. You know, Slate, the captain didn't want to come out to the ship in the first place. I wonder why. Yeah, a fellow might think the ship was going to blow up in his face. What are you saying, Shannon? Our captain boy's got a history. Rumor has it he time-bombed two ships. One in Macau, one in Montevideo. That is an interesting... Slate, watch him. He's... I've already got it, dear girl. My gun. Waiting for me in my desk drawer. The same one with which you killed Senor Norman? You'll never know. <laughs> Don't be a fool, you know, but I will. You... Oh, Shannon, help me. Yeah. Hold him, LaSalle. You're a fool, policeman. Get off my arm. He'll do that. <sighs> Did he get you, LaSalle? He <laughs> see. Here in my shoulder. Finish it for me, Slate. Well, don't stand there, sailor. Give LaSalle a hand. Here, put your armor on me. Gracias. Sit down here. Oh. Oh. On your feet, Captain. Come on, on your feet. Uh, we've got to get off the boat, lad. Yeah? How much time do we have, Carrie? I, I don't know. Not much. None, maybe. I think we should get off the boat, lad. Now, just take it easy. I want to give LaSalle your confession. Who killed Mrs. Norman? Uh, John Boy did it. I, I swear it. Did you help him? Uh, we'd better get off the boat. John wanted his wife to buy him this boat. He was going to show it to her, wasn't he? Then somehow he'd leave her alone on it, and it'd go off. Is that why we saw the golden swan floating around, Captain? I, I'm warning you, lad. Off the boat. Where's the time bomb hidden? It, it, it's going to go off soon. Who killed Johnny? I'll tell you ashore, lad. Uh-uh. <laughs> I want a confession. Sailor's my witness. Hi. The sow's fainted, Slate. Got a cigarette, sailor? Sure. I'll light it for you. Here. Thanks. Slate, what's all this business about we're going to get blown up? That's a trick the captain has. Uh, listen, listen. The bomb's in the hold. An alarm clock wired to dynamite, strung to the seal, and a little after the engine. Well, that's a nice place. Very. Uh, get it for the love of me. Oh, there's lots of time. No, no, lad, there isn't. There's ten sticks of dynamite. Who killed Johnny? Uh, get the bomb. Who killed him? Uh, I did, I did. Let's go, Captain. Get the bomb. <laughs> we'll be too late. It'll blow up. Make him hurry. Sir. Come on, come on. <laughs> there, there, there it is. Get it. Yeah. Tear out the wires, Captain. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's done. It's done. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Sailor. Uh-huh? If I ever get brave like that again... Wire me to ten sticks of dynamite and set me off for ten o'clock. Slate? Yeah? 
I just got a call from the hospital. The Sal's going to be all right. Oh, that's fine. Uh, sailor, take a walk on the beach? Uh-uh, not tonight. Oh, this is a new sailor. What makes tonight different? Who needs walking on the beach? Okay, bye. Bye? Where are you going? I got a standing date with a hat check girl at the El Nido. We walk together between hats. That's nice. Bye. Well, aren't you going? Come here. <laughs> you just want to be begged, don't you? Bye, sailor. Slate! Slate, come back here. Check your hat, mister. Check your hat. Oh, Slate. You weren't going to leave me, were you? Check this beret, sailor. Your floor show's great. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring... Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, together in Bold Ventures.